Major progress on a cure for type 1 diabetes. Earlier today, Vertex Pharmaceuticals announced updated data on their clinical trial for their stem cell-based treatment known as Zemislacel, formerly known as VX880. This data was simultaneously published in the very prestigious New England Journal of Medicine pictured here. For a quick review, Zemislacel consists of insulin-producing islet cells that were grown from stem cells in a lab. If proven to be safe and effective, these islet cells can be produced at nearly infinite scale. However, it's important to note that Zemislacel requires patients to take lifelong immunosuppressive therapy to protect these new islet cells from the same autoimmune destruction that destroyed the original islet cells in people with type 1 diabetes. Now let's dive into the exciting data. 10 out of the 12 participants who received the full dose of this one-time treatment had achieved full insulin independence, meaning they did not need any insulin at day 365. You can see each subject's daily insulin requirements pictured here in the above graph. In the beginning, closer to day zero, you can see many different lines, all in ranging from 20 to 70 units of insulin a day. As you approach the right side of this graph at one year, you see that there's really only three lines. The zero line, which represents all 10 of those patients who were no longer requiring insulin, and the two lines up here that represented the two individual patients who still required insulin, but as you can see, one had a 36% reduction in their total insulin and the other had a 70% reduction in their total insulin. To flesh this data out even more, here's a graph showing people's insulin response to a mixed meal and observed over four hours after that meal. This gray line, essentially across the exact x-axis at zero, represents the fact that patients made no insulin at baseline. Each darker shade of blue as you go up represents their insulin response to that meal at different points in the study. Day 90 in the light blue all the way up to day 365 which is the darkest blue at the top. So as you can see after one year they were having a real robust insulin response. This graph up top represents each individual participant's CGM based time in range. At time zero on the left their time in range was mostly below 70. But by that one year mark pictured right here all of them were achieving a time in range above the goal of 70%, with most of them being above 90%. Looked at another way, all the subjects went from an average time in range of 49.5% at baseline to 93.3% at one year, with 10 out of 12 of them not requiring any outside insulin. That's amazing. It is important to note that two participants did die in this study but one passed away from a severe brain infection, likely due to immunosuppressive medications. And the second death was related to a progression of pre-existing neurocognitive impairment. Beyond that, the other adverse events were less severe and mostly associated with the immunosuppression. As of the time of the publication, there were about 52 patients enrolled in the trial already. I can't wait to hear all the updates over the next year.